Hey, what's going on, everybody? It's Joe. I'm the Eager Expat, and if uh, this is the first time you're watching my channel with a, a name like visiting Bangkok for the first time, I apologize to folks that are watching my channel often. I, I'm grateful for each and every one of you, but I started this channel to help folks that are considering coming over to Bangkok or Thailand. Bangkok is where I live, so I have a little bit more knowledge. Once again, I apologize if it's uh, repeat information. I don't blame you if you want to take a pass on the video, but we still need to help those new folks that have no idea of even the basics. It's just not that complicated, so I'm going to try to lay it out here. It's about 10 o'clock at night. And somebody's working the bus on next door. Welcome to Thailand. Not a big deal. Now, maybe you're just getting your passport or you don't even have that passport yet. You certainly need a passport to visit a, a country like Thailand or any country really from the United States. I know sometimes you can slide into Mexico without a passport, but there's no sliding over to Thailand without a passport. So you're going to have to take care of that. When you travel from the U.S., once again, I'm U.S. based. So that's the majority of my information. I, I don't want to be passing out information on traveling from the U.K. or Australia because I have never did that. Well, I did it as a U.S. citizen, but I don't know how to uh, give you information to travel the first time from Australia. Uh, again, I apologize for that, but I, I can only talk on what I know, and that's coming from the U.S. Right now, it's 2024. When you arrive in Thailand, you do not need a tourist visa. You don't need a visa on arrival. You'll get what's called a visa exempt stamp, and that is good for 60 days. Now it changes. It was 30 days for the longest time. Today it's 60 days. So let's just keep that in mind. We can extend that visa exempt one time, I think one time, for 1900 baht. Uh, you'll have to do the conversion, whatever the local currency is. It also fluctuates. The Thai baht right now is it's not so great. It's around 33 to 1 US dollar. It's been as high as 37 to 1 within three or four months so it, it can fluctuate up and down and obviously it would be better to travel when it's 37 to 1 but hey you know I'm not gonna change a, a life dream vacation to save 200 bucks now you can be asked and you might be asked for proof of onward travel now what that means is you'll check in let's say at LAX and Perhaps at, at Japan Airlines or ANA, Air Nippon Airline, they're going to ask you, where is your proof that you're out of Thailand before that 60 days? Just keep in mind, if you're planning on coming over here, which I encourage you to do for an extended period of time before you sell everything and make the big move over here. So let's say that's 60 days plus 30, 90 days. That's a pretty good look around. What would be better is to do 60 days and on day 59, just take a side trip, go look at another country, go look at Malaysia or Indonesia, Vietnam, Cambodia, come back and you'll get a fresh 60 days. You can't abuse that. I mean, if you try to live over here doing these border jumps every uh, 60 days, there's no written rule on how many times you can do that. But let's just say after the third or fourth time, you're probably going to be pulled into a little side room. Hey, what are you doing here? You know, are you living here full time? You appear to be coming and going for two days, but you're basically here for 60 and 90 days at a time. So don't abuse that trick, I guess. I, I won't call it a trick, but don't abuse the 60 plus 90. Um, you're not going to be able to get away with it forever. Doing it once or maybe even twice, that's probably not going to be a problem. So anywhere... Anyways, you're still going to have to have proof of onward travel. If you're checking in at LAX or New York City, they may ask you, where's your proof? You're, you're heading out of Thailand on day 60 or day 59. So just get that ticket. Get that $50 round trip. Go take a look at Cambodia for three or four days. You'll have to check the uh, visa rules on uh, Cambodia, Vietnam, Malaysia. Malaysia is easy. You just show up and it's visa exempt, just like Thailand. Other countries like Indonesia, you can get a visa on arrival. Again, this is for U.S. citizens. Pay, I think it's like 26 U.S. dollars. But you can do it at the airport. Other countries, once again, like Vietnam, they're a little stricter. 
you need to apply for that visa and it might take seven to ten business days so pick your spots on where you want your side trip to be but i suggest you do a side trip on day 59 come back and get a fresh 60 days that's four months with the exception of that uh whatever let's call it a three or four day side trip to check out Bangkok, check out Thailand, plenty of time to travel within Thailand. That's not going to count as onward travel. That's You're still remaining in Thailand. So if you're here in Bangkok and uh, they're asking you for onward travel, you can't show them a ticket to Phuket or Krabi. It's not going to count. They want to see you leaving Thailand. You don't have to show them a return ticket coming back to the U.S., but you need to show them you're exiting the country. That's what Thailand is asking the airlines to do and they'll do it 80% of the time or 60% of the time whatever I, I've been asked often people will ask I'm sorry I got a bug flying around in the camera in front of the camera here people will ask if they're going to ask for onward travel at immigration in Thailand I've never been asked if you start collecting those uh, 60 day trips let's say two or three of them in your passport every year yeah at some point they might pull you into that side room and say, what's going on here? When are you leaving? And when you leave, how long are you planning to be gone for? So you don't want to have any of those uncomfortable uh, discussions. You can move into a long-term visa, such as the non-O for retirement, if you're over 50 and it comes with restrictions, like you need to have 800,000 Thai baht in the bank. I've did a very detailed video on how to get your non-O, at least how I did it. So I'll put a link in the video description if uh, you're seriously interested in, in getting that visa. At least take a look at it. But for now, we're just coming over here on a four-month trip and deciding if we even want to be here and then go home and sell everything, and give everything away and come on over here like the rest of us. Now, where I suggest you stay, and this is going to be kind of a no-brainer again people that have visited Bangkok or they're living here or whatever they're gonna say no kidding telling a person to go live in the Sukhumvit area it is kind of expat central and that is a good place to ease into the adjustment of uh, you know moving halfway around the world to Thailand and Bangkok you might as well be in an expat friendly area and then once you're over here for that two, three, four months, yeah, make some side trips 10 miles from that area. And it's going to be way more authentic Thai and way more mellow. There's also going to be much less English spoken. And there's not going to be a British pub around the corner to go get a pint of Guinness or Sunday roast. Here in, I'm in the Prom Pong area. I, if I didn't mention, I'm sitting on the uh, uh, patio of the Double Tree Hotel. The Double Tree I'll get into maybe some medium priced places to stay, but this is a fine choice. It's right in Prom Pong. It's close to the BTS, which is the above ground train. You have the MRT, which is some of it is above ground, but most people consider that the subway. The BTS Sukhumvit light green line runs through what I'll call Expat Central from eh, Nana BTS station to Asok, Prom Pong. Tong La. Tong La, that is a pretty fancy area. I did videos calling it the Beverly Hills of Bangkok. There are tons of uh, Korean and Japanese expats, business people, staying in that area, and it's not uncommon to see 100,000 plus condos. Now, Prom Pong, where I'm living, I, I live close to the hotel here, I have a, a fairly large apartment for. Bangkok or Thailand standards, it's 52 meter, and I pay 19,000 baht in one of the more expensive parts of town. That deal is probably going to be hard to find, but you could probably get my size apartment for 25,000 baht. Again, it's a little bit older building. It's still nice, gym, pool, the works. They're recently painting the building, so upkeep is nice. But what I'm getting at is if you'll go with a I don't know what my building is, 18 years old, as opposed to a three-year-old fancy gold-plated building in Tong La, you can pay 20 or 25,000 baht. You can pay 10,000 baht. You're just going to be way down the line 
when I say stay between Nana and uh, I call it Ekamai, that that's about five or six train stations. You can go 15 train stations away and, and get a nice place for 200 US dollars a month. It just is a little further away. It's 20, 25 minutes on the train. The train stops at midnight. So keep all that in mind. If you're coming over here, like most of us, you're going to do some partying. Maybe not so much in the red light areas, but if the red light areas are uh, something you're going to want to check out, they're in this area. They're near the Asulk BTS station and the Nana BTS station. The other large red light area is Patpong. That's not far away, right? but it's not close. I don't know, 12 train stops away. But staying way out in... Uh, Let's say bearing, that's a real popular buzzword. I stay out in bearing. It's not that far from central Bangkok, which would be a sulk, I guess. Terminal of 21 at a sulk, it's also the junction for the MRT Sukhumvit. And from there, you can uh, travel one train stop from Sukhumvit MRT and a sulk junction up to Pechaberry MRT. From there, you can walk a short distance to the Makassan train station, and that has the airport rail link, which for a dollar fifty, I think, takes you straight into the basement of Suwanapum, the probably the international airport you are going to arrive in. You can also, of course, take it into the city. Now, keep in mind that train, I believe, also stops at midnight. But once you're getting past midnight. Traffic's died down, other than the Sukhumvit area. You can still get traffic around Asolk and Nana at 3 in the morning. But you're not going to be able to avoid that. The other airport, Don Muang, that's the older international airport. From this area, you can also... It's not complicated. I did videos on all these things. You can just search my channel, taking the uh, train to Don Muang. And basically what you're going to do is take the... MRT, the subway, out to Bangsu. It's now, uh, uh, what is it? Uh, uh, they've changed the name of uh, Bangsu, but it still says Bangsu on the train. And then you're going to switch to the government train, the new red line, which is going to take you out to Dunhuang Airport. It'll also get you very close to where you'll go to extend your 60-day visa exempt. That's at Lexi. It's kind of a shopping mall. And also Chang Watana, that is the main immigration. It's a building the size of the, the Pentagon in D.C. It's, it's huge. But that's where you'll go later on in life to deal with uh, getting those nano visas and all that type of thing. So getting back to my little list here. Okay, so I, I'm, I'm recommending to stay in Expat Central here for good reasons. Everybody's going to speak English. The whole... The whole deal with uh, they don't speak English in Thailand, it's, it's just not true. At, uh, in major cities, Bangkok, Pattaya, anywhere you're probably going to stay, unless you're heading up to a small village in, in Isan and you're just go, going full authentic and living in a non-air-conditioned little room with a one acre of, of rice field to tend. Yeah, they're, they're going to speak Thai up there, and you better... Uh, bone up on, on learning Thai quick, but if you're down here in Bangkok, 90% of the conversations you're going to have will be in English in the expat area. If you're in a suburb of Bangkok, 20 miles away, it's going to be a little hit or miss. I'll, I'll say 40% of the conversations will be in English. So once again, coming over here, just getting your feet wet, do yourself a favor and stay in an expat-friendly area. This isn't the only one, but this is the most popular, and it's popular for a reason. We're all kind of hanging out here, and, and there are plenty of uh, choices for Texas barbecue here or really great Mex Mexican food there, all within two square miles. So, so check out this area. Nana, I would stay down there if, if you're a partier. If, if you're not a partier, Maybe stay up where I stay in the Prompong area, Tongla, Ekamai, Nana, and Asolk. That is the number one tourist area. And um, it's between Nana and Asolk are Soy Cowboy and the Nana Red Light area. So there's a lot of street activity. I'll just leave it at that. There's a lot of, uh, eh, 
I don't know, scams happening. If, if you're going to have any kind of trouble anywhere in Thailand, it's going to be between Nana and Asok in uh, Bangkok because that's where all the grifters are hanging out and all. So you might not want to live there. With that being said, Asok probably has some of the most expensive real estate in town. Just beautiful, beautiful apartments. But I'll, I'll leave that up to you. I've had buddies who live in that area and they say it's great. However, at some point, you kind of get tired of being treated like a tourist just because you're a foreigner, a frong. Um, if it's approaching a, a motorbike, you know, you might say, hey, take me from here to there. And the guy says, okay, 200 baht. And you're like, hey, you know, I live here. I know the fare's 50 baht. So you'll have to kind of walk up and, and say, hey, 50 baht to take me from here to there. And it'll probably happen. Although in that area, he might say, no, I'm not going to do it. I'm waiting for a tourist that's going to give me 500 baht for that same ride and, and think it's a great deal. So just keep that in mind when you're even picking your place to stay. And I would recommend staying somewhere you think you might want to stay long term when you come back. And I love Prom Pong. I'm, I'm a big, big advocate on this Prom Pong area. Once again, other people might comment, no, that's 30% more expensive than staying out past on Newt or, or Bering and on and on. But I'm a night owl. It's, it's 10 o'clock right now and I'm heading out. I'm going to go have a couple of beers, hang out, uh, go to my favorite Irish pub. I'm sure I'll run into somebody I know. Next thing you know, we're hanging out. It's one in the morning. Maybe go get a, a bite of uh, Thai food and I'm walking home. If I were out in uh, Bering, the train has stopped. If it's really pouring rain, it's hard to get a cab to go these longer distances. They just want to kind of, they all have a broken meter, it appears, when, when it starts to rain, and they just want to take people up and down a two-block radius and charge them 100 baht, and, you know, rather than heading way out to the suburbs and all. Again, if that's not you, and I go party once a month, or I never go party, and I go to sleep at 9 o'clock every night, and I'm up at 5 in the morning, by all means, head out to the end of the train line and, and stay as affordably as you'd like. Myself, I'm kind of right in the middle of the action. And if it cost me an extra 200 bucks a month, it's well worth it to me. I'd probably pay 100 bucks a month in, in cabs and grab cars and on and on. Now, what you're going to want to do with your U.S. phone, 99% of phones now are going to be able to accept dual SIMs. I think my phone can... I don't know, 10 SIMs or something. I, I must have four or five in it right now because I just, uh, they're electronic SIMs, but I travel to Malaysia, Indonesia. Um, I travel to these places often. So I just keep the SIM in my phone. I keep some small money on there just to keep it alive. It's these pay-as-you-go type SIMs. And that's what I have in Thailand. I, I started out with a uh, getting a monthly bill. There's AIS and True. They're, they're the two biggies. You also hear DTAC, but I think DTAC was bought by, by True. I'm, I'm not sure if the merger is complete. But I've had AIS on and off for 10, 12 years. I did the plan where I bought the expensive uh, Samsung Galaxy Ultra and it's the same like at, at Costco. Okay, if you buy the phone and sign up for a pretty expensive phone plan, I think it was like 50 bucks a month, you get the phone for whatever, $150 cheaper. So I did that, and once the phone was paid off, I did what all my buddies told me to do, and what they're doing is just get a, a pre, prepaid plan. Yeah, postpaid is when you get the bill. Prepaid, you put you load money on the phone each month, basically. And to not mess around, just get a basic plan. Everything is going to be online. The Line app is what you'll be using over here, not WhatsApp. Every Thai person, every Thai business is gonna use Line, L-I-N-E. So do yourself a favor and um, put Line on your phone in the US and hook it up to your parents' phone or anybody that might need help on using an app like Line or WhatsApp. You can do both, but just having Line, it, it'll make your life simpler because I'm staring at Line all day long. I, I'll sometimes miss a WhatsApp notification and 
maybe it'll be two or three days before I, I open it and, oh, somebody called me three days ago on WhatsApp, I need to return that call. But with Line, it, it's just easy. Now, I have said that before and people have said I had a hard time setting up Line in the US. <clears throat> Excuse me. I think what the issue is, other people had left a comment and it kind of makes sense because I told them, well, I set up Line on my US phone in theory, I think you're only supposed to have line on one phone at a time because I, I right now I have a U.S. phone and I have a Thai phone and I tried to have line on both and it wouldn't, wouldn't allow it. Now, that was one line plan through one email. If I set up one at Yahoo and set up one at Gmail, maybe I could have two, but pick your spots, get your Thai phone number, and when you go back home, give it to all, have your folks, whoever it is that they're going to contact you online, have them be calling your Thai phone number, not your U.S. phone number. I recommend keeping the U.S. phone number because I do a lot of two-step authentication from banks and Social Security or on and on. For me, again, it's a long discussion on um, I keep T-Mobile open. I pay 50 bucks a month. Other people have commented, yeah, I, I do the same thing, keeping a U.S. phone, but I keep Mint or I keep this one. It's 6 bucks a month. Tello, I think, is one, or this one is 9 bucks a month. I keep T-Mobile, and I'm paying the 50 because I was a, a veteran years and years ago, so I kind of BSed my way into, I think, what is intended to be an active-duty military plan. And In other words, it's for folks whose U.S. cell phone is not planning on hitting a U.S. Cell, cell tower anytime soon because I was told by Verizon and T-Mobile if my U.S. phone did not hit a U.S. cell tower uh, at the 12-month mark, Verizon said we're going to cut you off. T-Mobile said at the 12-month mark, we're supposed to cut you off, but wink, wink, it'll happen at the 24-month mark. You'll, you'll get some hate text messages saying, hey, what's going on? Are you... Uh, 100% out of the country and you know this is a US line that that goes against FCC rules or whatever the case is anyhow I'm over two and a half years and my T-Mobile is still going strong once again maybe because I have that military plan so if you can get yourself something like that it may or may not be worth it to you to pay the 50 bucks with T-Mobile and keep that thing alive all the folks that have said they use Mint and, and, and all these different places, that's all great. I don't know if they've been using Mint for three years and it's still going strong or that's going to be an issue. Or I don't know what their travel schedule is. Uh, many people go back to the U.S. once a year or twice a year or at least every year and a half. I kind of thought I was going to do that. I wake up one day and I've been here two and a half years. I'll probably be going back at some point soon. I mean, I'm not, you know, moving over here and just staying here permanently, but I'm certainly not rushing back to the U.S. just to have my phone hit a U.S. cell tower. So keep that in mind. Learn about the dual SIM or just use two phones. That's kind of my simplistic way of doing things. I have my U.S. phone at home. It never leaves my condo. It's, it's just on Wi-Fi, nothing tricky, no drop calls on Wi-Fi, and then switching into a 30 cents a minute call because I didn't notice, none of that. Everything's turned off, it's, uh, no, no data roaming, nothing. The only thing that's turned on is Wi-Fi calling, and it basically just sits there next to my computer. And most of the time, I'm talking to somebody at 10, 11 o'clock at night, because keep in mind, if it's midnight here in Thailand, it's either midnight or one in the morning, I think, in New York City, and then subtract three hours for the West Coast, my San Diego people. So very rarely do I need to be walking around with my U.S. phone because it's the middle of the night with anybody I know in the U.S. I just leave it at home. Now, making some side trips from Bangkok, Pattaya. You want to get over there and take a look if, if you're into the party scene. There's really nothing like it in the world. Many people, they've lived in Pattaya 10, 15 years, and the only thing they know about Bangkok is the airport. They just have no desire 
for the big city. It is a big, huge city. I think there's 16 million people in this general area, so that comes with traffic and smog in between the big buildings and all. Not, not so much crime. Very, very safe city. There's pickpockets and purse snatchers everywhere in the world, but there's no roving gangs here. You're not going to get mugged. It, it'd be very, very rare if it happened, and it would make the expat quote-unquote news, and I've never heard of it. So keep all that in mind. But you want to go over there and, and take a look. It's less than 100 miles from Bangkok. It takes about two and a half hours on the bus. It's cheap. The government bus, Ekamai bus station. Again, I've did videos on it. You can use the search bar on on the top of my channel. It's not the YouTube search bar. It's, it's my personal channel. And just type in going to Pattaya or taking the bus to Pattaya and two or three videos are going to pop up. I, I don't know how many videos I have, seven or 800 or getting close to that. And I did videos on most of these things. So I'm just trying to pay it forward a little bit and help people along. But the nice big Greyhound size government bus, it's less than five or six dollars round trip. There are minivans. I would shy away from the minivans. You'll, you'll be surprised how many people they can stuff in one of those things. And if they can stuff in two extra people and you're holding your suitcase in your lap for that two and a half hours, that's what they're going to do. If you want to go first class, 75, 80 bucks round trip, you can arrange a private car service or you can even walk up to a, a cab and negotiate some kind of deal. But I would use NAM, N-A-M-S, NAM's car service. I've used her three or four times there are many others just just google a car service from bangkok to to Padilla and um yeah some different different names will come up that everybody uses it's it's the same handful of people that nam she's an interesting person all her ladies it's all ladies that that drive car and the cars and they're all former bar girls i mean it's no secret they're now uh retired however you want to look at it and and driving cars so that's uh that's kind of cool i think to uh have some some more employment for them when they're they're done with the whole bar scene now if you're gonna go to patia that's a whole different deal i did videos on it i stay at the holiday Inn express 90 percent of the time i go over there i don't go often a couple of times a year Holiday Inn Express, it's it's reasonable, $35, $40. It comes with breakfast. You can walk to everything in the Pattaya area. Another very popular destination hotel is the Arica, R-A-R-I-C-A. But look up Holiday Inn, Arica, anything in between that area or within a half a mile, you're going to be in the thick of all the crazy action. If you want to go over there, yet you don't want to stay in the middle of the craziness, take a look at Jom Tien Beach. It's five miles away, I think. It has a little bit of red light going on over there, but it's a, a much more mellow beach vibe, and you're a quick 15-minute trip over to the craziness of Patia and Tree Town. Walken Street used to be kind of the original crazy area. Now, I think the Chinese tourists and have kind of taken over. And uh, Chinese tourists, they spend a lot of money. So when they take over a bar and start throwing money around like it's going out of style, they don't want other foreigners in there. They, they want that beer to be closer to 10 U.S. dollars. And yeah, me, I might walk in there and say, I'm not, I'm not spending that money and out I go. And they're just fine with that. They'd rather have it full of Chinese tourists. So that, a lot of that is going on in Walken Street. There's still great little bars over there. There's a little area called Soy Diamond. And Soy, if you're unfamiliar, just means street. Soy Diamond, right off of Walking Street. There's a, a Mr. Egg. He has a, a really great bar there. What is it called? La Pub? I think it's La Pub. It's, it's, forgive me, Mr. Egg, if I have it wrong. He also has a, a pretty fun YouTube channel, more just on uh, Padia, but check out La Pub and that Soy Diamond. Another great side trip from Bangkok might be Koh Samui. That is just a cool little island. It's, it's not far, less than an hour, I think, flight from Bangkok. Phuket and Krabi. Phuket is kind of the Honolulu of Thailand. It, it's 
hustle bustle beach action Krabi it's on the beach both both of them are good dive spots and I've taken the ferry in between the two but Krabi is my favorite over Phuket it's just much more mellow go check them both out but whatever you do if you're gonna be in Bangkok for four months Take some side trips, check out these islands. Many people love living in Phuket or on the outskirts of Phuket, Krabi, Samui. There's just so many choices in Thailand besides the big city of, of Bangkok. I just happen to love the big city. To me, it's uh, this is like New York City with 1990s prices. The energy, the hustle and bustle, a 24-hour city. I love it. You may hate it, but the only way you're going to know is, is come over and check it out. Now, another thing you might want to consider is scheduling some dental work. I don't really know anything about paying cash for medical procedures. I think if you need some simple things done, it, it may be worth it. I have medical insurance. I would recommend to at least get some travel insurance. I know a lot of YouTubers are talking about safety wings. I think they have a pretty good affiliate program. I'm, I'm not a member of, maybe I need to look into that because uh, many of these YouTubers are saying, you have to have safety wings, safety wings. It's a good idea for you to have some kind of travel insurance. And it's also that YouTuber making five bucks or whatever the case is every time you sign up for a policy. So when you're seeing different YouTubers, including myself, I mean, I did videos on... Uh, Mexico for a year and I'm still making money selling Mexican car insurance. You sure need it when you travel down into Mexico with your California car or Arizona car. You need that Mexican policy. God forbid you kill somebody down there. You're going to jail for a long, long time unless you're coming up with hundreds of thousands of dollars. It's gone are the days of you pull out a, a crisp $100 bill and that ends all problems. You might crash into somebody's Tesla down there in Tijuana and kill somebody and you're going to jail if you don't have insurance. So please, please, please get that Mexican insurance policy. And I recommend a, a company in, in California, in San Diego, called Baja Bound. Everything's in English and there's all kinds of uh, things in place to help you out with just that simple phone call in the event of an emergency. So I'm fine promoting that company, but a company like Safety Wings I've never used. I, I don't know anything about but do your homework on it. Have some kind of travel insurance. You crash your motor scooter over here. It's not going to cost what it'll cost in the U.S. or London, but it still could be ten or 15000 cash if you break your leg in a couple of pieces and, and need to be put back together. Cheaper things. I, I do have health insurance over here. My uh, Blue Cross, I'm a retired federal worker. It works fine at uh, the finest hospital, one of the finest in town is Bumrangrad, Bangkok Hospital, uh, Samiti J. These, there's all top of the line hospitals and healthcare here in Bangkok. That's another good reason to consider moving over or coming for extended visits. But there have been times where I've had simple procedures. I had, eh, you're getting older, you need some dermatology things that might be precancerous, scraped off and lasered off and on and on. I go in, I pay my $150 copay, the same copay it would be in the U.S. Your insurance follows you. It doesn't care if the procedure is $500 or $5,000, you have a $150 copay. Well, it was just that. I paid my $150, and when I got all the final bills, it was like a $300 deal to basically have laser surgery, and uh, they froze a couple of things off my ear, and on and on. It, it was affordable is what I'm getting at. If Again, I would not recommend coming over here without travel insurance, but travel insurance, that it's probably not going to cover uh, getting some things lasered off that may or may not be precancerous. So if you want to do some of these things cash, look into it and look into Bumrangrad. I did videos on that. I don't have experience with any of the other hospitals other than uh, buddies telling me it, it worked out fine for them, but... I'm a Bumrigrad man, and you can check my channel for those videos. Also, consider getting some somewhat affordable dental. It's not going to be free. You're not going to go to the dentist in Bangkok and pay five bucks. But if a procedure in the U.S., let's say you need a root canal and a crown, and I'll make up the numbers, it's $1,500, 
Maybe you can get it done for five or six hundred dollars at one of the finer dental hospitals in town. Again, I don't know. I, I have dental insurance as well. My cleaning, I think, is 30 bucks, and my insurance pays 15 of it or something like that. Um, I'm sure you can get your teeth cleaned for $15 somewhere in Bangkok, but I go to Bangkok International Dental Hospital. It's probably one of the finer places in town. It, it's just that, a six-story hospital, but all they have are dentists and specialty dentists. Uh, if you want to get into higher-priced items like uh, uh, implants and all, I'm sure they'll do all that, but I, I don't have any implants. Um, I've seen it in, in the waiting room, uh, whatever it is. I guess some of the finer implants come from Switzerland, and it'll, it'll, there'll be a poster like, we, we do this procedure, the Swiss engineering, on and on. So look into it. Check out my videos on Bangkok International Dental Hospital or any dentist over here. I'd be a little careful. There are some dental practices that are just, they're everywhere. And there are some that are just wedged in between a couple of a dry cleaner and a, a bar somewhere. And it's just a little one man office. And the dentist is kind of sitting there at the reception table and you walk in and, hey, you know, uh, I was thinking about having my teeth cleaned and he says, well, jump in the chair. Let's knock it out. That might be fine for a teeth cleaning, but to get a full set of x-rays and a half dozen implants, that's still going to be in the thousands of dollars. That might be worth paying the extra, whatever it is, 20% to go to one of these fancier places in town. And every time I'm in that Bangkok uh, International Dental Hospital, I'm sitting around with, with guys kind of over over hearing their conversations and all and they're clearly working maybe as marines at the u.s embassy whatever the case is that is a uh, an expat friendly dental place so consider getting some dental work now getting into hotels you are going to get what you pay for with a hotel anywhere in the world the the nice thing about bangkok is you can stay off season not during a holiday weekend or anything like that, sure, you can pay $300, $350 a night at a hotel. I, I think one of the hotels over on the Chow Prior River was just named the finest hotel in Asia and in the top 10 in the world. I'm not sure which. I Maybe it was the Mandarin Oriental. Now, you're not going to stay there ever for, you know, cheap. I'm sitting here in between the Doubletree and the Hilton, and the Hilton I've seen listed at $125. Uh, maybe it drops under 100 at times. I've seen this double tree at 50 US dollars. Now, don't get on me with the prices. If you look it up and it says, uh, no, it, New, on New Year's Eve, it was listed at $160. Well, of course, you know, that's New Year's Eve and people are coming in from all over Thailand to do their partying in Bangkok. I'm just giving you examples that this double tree is kind of a more medium price place that you might be able to get a good deal on. Another place is on Sukhumvit Soy 24, the Hyatt Place. That is the lowest in the Hyatt chain. And it's a beautiful hotel. It's maybe six years old. I stayed there when it was brand new. And I love my Hyatt cards and Hyatt miles. It's a category one. Maybe they bumped it up to a category two. But get yourself a credit card with whatever it comes with these days. Let's say 50,000 Hyatt points. I think you can stay there many times for 3,500 a night. So do the math, even if it's 5,000 points a night. Get that Hyatt card and then stay there for X number of nights and then pay cash for the other nights. I've stayed there sometimes on cash deals around $50. Again, it could be up closer to $100 now, and it all depends on the fluctuation of the Thai bot and all. But those are a couple of uh, nice medium priced. Another would be the Courtyard by Marriott over on Sukhumvit Soy 20. Now, if you want some good value hotels, these are in the party area down on Soy 11. Soy 11 is getting to be like the Vegas Strip of Bangkok. It, it has fancy nightclubs. There's a little bit of red light going on in there, but mostly it's uh, rooftop bars and bottle service, nightclubs, and on and on. It, it's loud, so any of the hotels you stay at there, 
till three in the morning, you're going to hear thumping bass out the windows because it's, it's the party area. But there are some affordable places in the Travel Lodge and Holiday Inn Express on Soy 11. There's also a Ramada there. I, it might be a Ramada Express. The Travel Lodge and Holiday Inn, I've seen it at 40 bucks. Call it 55 with taxes and VAT fees and on and on. But that is a pretty darn good price to stay in the center of a major city. I mean, try getting a nice clean room for 50 bucks in Tokyo. Now, of course, on Agoda, and that's probably the go-to, not Hotel.com or Booking.com. I would look at Agoda. I'll match sometimes. I'll, I'll double check at Hotel.com, and Agoda always beats it by not much, but four, five, six bucks a night. And if you're staying a week, why not? You know, why throw that uh, money away? Hotel.com used to be cool. It used to be uh, stay 10 nights and get, or stay nine nights and get the 10th night free. And then they kind of turned it into, uh, well, how much did you pay for those 10 nights? You're going to get that in a credit. And I, I don't know. I've shied away from Hotel.com. I'm going to go to man now. But, but check it out. And sure, you're going to see plenty of hotels on there for $22. I'll leave it up to you. Maybe check into a little bit nicer $50 place, $60 place, and then go walk over to that $22 place. The toilet might be down the hall, or I, it's not going to be the finest room. You're, you're going to get what you pay for if you book yourself a $20 hotel room in central Bangkok. Now, on the edges of Bangkok or even out by the airport. And the airport's a long way. You don't want to stay by Sawanapum or, or Don Moong. That's a long way from quote-unquote expat central here. It's 25, 30 miles away. So, yeah, out there, yeah, right near the airport, they might get you because many people are uh, whatever, flying in and, and flying out the next day and they just want to get that hotel room, so they might charge 90 bucks. But you get what I'm saying. You can probably get a place out there that's decent for 20 or 25 bucks, but I don't know if I'd want to stay there for four months. Now, don't worry too much about money. Your ATM card is going to work here. Let your credit card know. Let, your, let them know you're going to use your ATM card or your credit cards. If it's Chase, maybe Credit Union, whoever it is, let them know there's going to be Thailand activity and find out what the fees are going to be. Navy's not that bad. I think they charge... Eh, I think they charge 1% of what you take out. So if you take out what the equivalent of $200, they're going to charge you 2 bucks, And then you might pay another small fee of like $1.50. Don't quote me on these things. And then that ATM, whatever bank it is, Thai Bank, they're probably going to charge you 4 bucks. So for 6 or 7 bucks to use the ATM, yeah, you can look into the Schwab card. Schwab will reimburse your ATM fees. Again, Everybody uses the Schwab card over here. I think it's going to go away at some point. They're already clamping down on folks in uh, Mexico and Panama. I, I'm on all these different travel sites. And folks that are retired down there and having their Social Security checks sent to Schwab, and for the last six or seven years, it's been a good ride. They're uh, not keeping any money at Schwab. Now, if you keep whatever the magic number is, 100 grand, 50 grand, 200 grand, I don't know. Maybe they're not going to care about your ATM usage or what they uh, give you back in, in reimbursement. But if you keep 50 bucks in there and you just draw your Social Security check down to zero each month and that costs them 20 or $25 to reimburse you, yeah, at some, some point you're not a good customer to them. So expect that that's going to go away. But Use your ATM over here. That's that's probably safer than bringing $10,000 in cash. Now, if you are going to bring cash, clean $100 bills. Make sure there are no markings on the bills, no tears, no idiot who wrote his name on the bill. The exchange booths, Super Rich is probably one of the, the better names around town for the exchange rate. They're not going to be able to accept it because they're not going to be able to turn it in for uh, reimbursement. So clean bills and you'll be fine there. And try to break even. Don't get $2,000 in U.S. money of Thai bot and then go back and say, here, I need to turn this 500 back into U.S. dollars because you're going to get a way worse rate on uh, 
turning it back into dollars. You're going to lose money there. And as far as the exchange rate, you, you can't time the market. Right now, it's not doing so good. It's 33 to 1 or even a little little less. I think it's flipped into the 32 to 1 range, 32.8, something like that. And it's been 37 to 1 within six months. But you can't, you can't worry about that. It just kind of is what it is. Come, enjoy your vacation. If you lost 200 bucks or $300 because the exchange rate is a little crummier, it is what it is. Don't, don't lose sleep over that. I also wouldn't lose sleep over, well, I need to go find super rich to exchange my money because, you know, people say it's the best. Yeah, if they're giving, and I'll make the numbers up, 33.5 to one U.S. dollar, well, the exchange booth right at your hotel might be given 3, 33.475. Up to you if you want to spend two hours to go find the super rich in the 100 degree heat and all to exchange $500 and whatever that difference is going to be, I'll make it up $5.10. Yeah, I'm not going to lose a lot of sleep. Just have one less pint at the bar and, and call that even. Now, one other thing I would do when I'm here is establish a relationship with a realtor. Most condos you're going to rent, you're going to go through a realtor. You can look at Facebook, but you're then on your own as far as uh, them doing up the lease. At least with a realtor, it's probably going to be the land person, landladies, and most of my landlords are ladies, so the landlady, landlord, whatever you want to call it, it's probably going to be their realtor you're dealing with, and they'll handle everything. The realtor gets one month's rent from the landlord as the fee. You don't pay that. What you'll pay when you ultimately come back and want to sign a 12-month lease is three months. You're going to pay first month, last month, and security deposit. So if your rent's 500 bucks, it's going to be 1500 to move in. And when you move out, there's different people on Facebook that say they're going to rip you off for your deposit. I've never been ripped off. So those folks that are complaining about you know being ripped off for their deposit, they're probably not the greatest tenants in the world. I don't know. And, yeah, I mean, there's probably reasons why uh, they're not getting their deposit back. They tore the place up or the you know place has to be painted because they were smoking inside when they said they wouldn't. What, whatever the case was, it's just never been an issue for me in, in three leases. So I'm, I'm not too worried about it. But establish a, re a relationship with a realtor. And when you go back home at least have them email you. It, I'm sure it's an automated email list of the 10 buildings you're interested in. You can check out my videos. I've did videos on every soy from soy one to soy 101 in the Sukhumvit area and come over here. I, I would spend a good deal of time when you're over here exploring the different streets. Maybe watch my videos when you're doing a little armchair thinking from the U.S., but when you come over here, okay, soy whatever, 24 looked interesting. Let's walk up and down 24 in, in the evening. Let's do it in the middle of the day. Let's let's do it early in the morning. Let's check it out. Let's uh, make sure this building isn't whatever, right next to a chicken plucking factory. Of course, it's not on soy 24, but you don't know. I, I did have one buddy years ago. He moved into a condo. Um, a little bit sight unseen, signed a 12-month lease before he even got here. He was uh, confident on the area and, and on and on, And but what he didn't know, what, there was some kind of manu manufacturing plant right next door, and it was just grinding metal all day long. Now, most of the time, your windows are going to be closed and the air conditioner is going to be on, but he said he could still hear it. He, he wasn't making a big deal about it, but he probably... He said he probably would have went in another direction had he known they were uh, grinding metal uh, 100 feet from his uh, condo window. So there you go. That should get you started on uh, considering coming over for the first time. And I would highly recommend, even if, uh, even if you're, nope, I'm dead set on moving to Bangkok, I would still make a reconnaissance run if for no other reason check out some different cities. You might be from a smaller town in the U.S. and, and you're thinking, I absolutely want to live in, in Bangkok. Yeah, I, I mean, come over and check it out. You might hate it. 
you, you might love it. I don't know. I come from a medium city, San Diego. It, it doesn't compare to, say, a New York or a Chicago uh, as far as walking everywhere and all, and I love it. I, I have owned a car since I was 16 years old, and I've driven twice in the past two and a half years, and I don't miss it at all. I, I like riding, jumping on a train, going two train stops, meeting a buddy here, and going one train stop, and going to this restaurant I love. It, it's a, a lot, like living in downtown Chicago or New York City, and, and I love it. Other people, it will probably drive them crazy. So come over here and check it out. Maybe a more mellow city like Chiang Mai or an island living like Koh Samui is, is going to be more your speed. You don't, uh, just don't worry about it too much. Even with a lease, when you come over here and sign a 12-month lease, not I, I'm a man of my word, at least I try to be, but what the situation is, you can break that lease. Let's say you move into the condo and you're there three months and something comes up, you want to move to Koh Samui. Now you paid first, last, and deposit. You get a hold of the realtor or the landlord and say, hey, you know, circumstances have came up. I need to break the lease. They're going to say, fine, we're keeping the last month and the deposit. So basically it's a two-month penalty of your rent to break the lease. You're not responsible in most cases double check your lease but everywhere I've lived the situation was I usually bring it up under the guise of I, I 100% intend to stay here but I am from the United States if there's some kind of emergency and I have to go back to the United States uh, again I'm not planning on this happening but life happens if that happens how do we handle this lease and they've all said the same thing you will lose the last two months. Now, if you also did damage, you're going to lose the last two months and probably be responsible for that damage, but let's assume we're not going to do that. So hopefully all this information has uh, helped somebody. Again, if uh, you're one of my my followers, I, I'm sorry if this is all repeat information, but hang in there with me that uh, we need to help the next batch of people that are coming over. This is a wonderful place to live. It's affordable. I, I just love living here. So shoot me a comment. I do my best to answer most comments. I, I can't get into super detail or I'll be sitting there answering comments for three hours a day. I mean, go through my videos. I probably answered 75% of your questions in, in most of those videos. But I appreciate you watching and there'll be more videos to come. Consider subscribing for more thoughts about Bangkok and looks around this area and other parts of Southeast Asia. You take it easy. Have a great evening.